Hello, everyone. Welcome to another session of Canvas Live. We will start momentarily. Um, this is a Canvas Live session. Canvas Live sessions are generally presented by Canvas community members or instructor employees. And the purpose of these sessions are to help Canvas users like you to improve and enhance their teaching and learning with Canvas. So today we have uh, Jacob from UCF presenting on the You Do It installation. And I'll just hand it over to, to Jacob. Jacob. All right, thank you. Um, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, today we're going to go over how to install You Do It. Um, and uh, I'm sure you know what You Do It is uh, if you're at this session, but if you don't, um, it is uh, basically a, a tool that lets you scan your online course, uh, specifically in Canvas. Um, for possible accessibility issues. And it also lets you remediate uh, some of those issues uh, in the tool. So the, the process for installing you do it is normally very complicated. And even what you'll see today, there's a lot of steps to it. Um, but uh, you might have this event that um, usually you have to install you do it onto a server, you have to set up a database, you have to, uh, all the other server things that are involved there, you need a server administrator and, and all of that. Uh, you need to know a little bit about PHP just to know how to, how to set up the config file, that kind of stuff. But what I'm going to go over today is how to use Heroku uh, to host you do it for you. So Heroku, uh, if you're not familiar with that, is uh, it runs off of Amazon Web Services, the same platform that Canvas runs off of. And it's basically a, a way for you to get your app and, and just open source apps. It's a way for, uh, for them to, automated way to get them up and running um, really quickly. Some people use it for development. They'll, uh, if, you know, if they're working on their code, they will, um, and they want somebody across the world to test it out, they'll use Heroku just to put their code up there real quick, have, have somebody test it out. But then other people host their apps, uh, their production applications on Heroku. So it's a really versatile uh, hosting platform. And uh, today I'm going to show you how to use um, uh, Heroku to host you do it. So uh, I have my slides here, but I'm not really going to be using them because um, it would just it would be a hassle to switch back and forth between the presentation and uh, and what I'm actually showing on screen. Uh, I will be posting these slides in the uh, the Canvas Live event page uh, because the slides will contain links to all of the places where I'm going, uh, and it'll it'll help you put all this together after. Because I know you're you're probably not going to be following along with me uh, exactly, um, but uh, but the links in that presentation will will help you out. So. <clears throat> Um, also, any questions that you have, uh, I am I'm monitoring the um, the YouTube um, the YouTube uh, channel or, or the uh, the page, um, and so if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. But I'm not going to be uh, answering those questions immediately. I'm going to wait until the end, just because I want to get through everything that I have to to do today. So. Okay, <laughs> so I see that some people are already asking about these different steps. So let me just go go over everything we're going to do today. First thing we're going to do is find the You Do It project on GitHub. Uh, GitHub is a place for hosting open source projects, uh, and that's where we uh, we keep the open source distribution of, of You Do It. Um, we're also going to be creating an instance of You Do It on Heroku, like I discussed before. Uh, we're going to be creating a YouTube API key. I see that some people in the chat uh, had had not they didn't know about that step. So we'll show you how to do that. And it's there's a, a little bit of it's a little tricky to get the right API key in there. Um, and then uh, we're going to be creating a developer key in Canvas. And then we need to take all of that data and throw that into our Heroku instance. So it's a little backwards. You have to create it first, and then you get gets you gather up some of the keys uh, and then you after the fact put that data into your Heroku instance and then we're going to install the actual YouTube LTI into Canvas. So 
Uh, first thing we're going to do is go to the you do it GitHub page. So I'm just going to exit out of here, and uh, I'll come on. And then so. Okay, the live stream is running a little bit behind. So this is the uh, the you do it GitHub page. You can see all of the code is listed here. Uh, there's also a big README file here, and and this is very important. Um, it shows you all the pertinent information about copyright and and licensing, as well as uh, how to actually install it and the requirements. Uh, but what we're going to do in this case is we're not going to download uh, you do it at all. We're just going to click on this Deploy to Heroku button. So when I click on this, <clears throat> uh, what it's going to do is it's, it's going to tell me that I need a Heroku account. So I actually already have an account, so I'm going to log in, but you would need to create an account yourself. Um, and I should have logged in before. but. That's right. Okay. okay. So after clicking that button, if you were already signed in, you just get taken directly to this page. Um, so it's saying you want to deploy your own. You do it. Uh, app name is optional, but I highly recommend that you put in an app name because this is going to uh, determine what the URL of your app is later. So if you put in something that's human readable, it's going to be a lot easier to remember it. Otherwise, it'll it'll create some kind of gibberish name. So um, I'm going to make mine, um, you do it cam dash canvas live, OK? And then I'm going to keep it running in the United States, but you can choose uh, Europe if you want to, uh, to run it there. And that's basically where the, the physical servers are going to live. And then you can see that some of these values are auto-generated. We're just going to leave those the way they are. And then we have the OAuth2 ID and OAuth2 key. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to put in um, just junk values for these right now. And I'm just, yeah, just going to put in something in there because it requires it. And then what we're going to do later is we're going to come back after we've created the developer key and fill in these, these three fields right here, the off 2 ID, off 2 key, and off 2 URI. Uh, and then we also have the Google API key that we'll need to fill, uh, fill out. So what we're actually going to do now is while we're on the screen, we're just going to open up a new tab and create the Google API key. Um, and just like on cooking shows, I already have one prepared here. So this is the Google API or the Google Developer Console. So it's console.developers.google.com. And let me actually pull up the, the PowerPoint uh, so that you can see that value there. So you go to console.developers.google.com. You need to sign in with your Google account. Uh, in this case, we have an institutional account that we use for our official uh, things. Um, and we're going to create a project. We're going to enable the API, and we're going to create the credentials. And I'll go through that step by step. OK, so you can see I, I already have my app here from when I tested this out ahead of time. Um, but uh, in this case, I'm going to create a brand new project because we're installing a brand new you do it instance. So I'm going to go up to the little drop down and create project. I'm going to call it you do it dash canvas live. And it actually takes it a second to create the project. So while that's doing that, I'm going to look at the uh, the chat here and see if there's anything 
Okay, so somebody's asking about will a free uh, will a free Heroku account work for our testing of you do it? And the answer is yes. So that's what we're doing right here. We uh, I just have I'm actually using my personal Heroku account, which I'm not paying for at all, to run you do it. Um, one of the limitations of that is that um, you the server won't be terribly fast, and also it'll take some time to spin up if no one's used it in a certain amount of time. So let's say you're the only one testing. You finish testing for the day. You come back the next day, and you start up. You do it the first time. It's going to seem like the server's not working for a few seconds, and then it'll start up. Uh, so that's one of the limitations of the free Heroku. Um, but then you can also pay for it and get you know a beefier server that's on all the time. So <clears throat> um, OK, so now our you do it Canvas Live uh, application is created in the Google Developer Console. So the first thing we need to do is uh, go down here in the menu to YouTube Data API. Uh, so under the UP YouTube API setting, we're going to go to YouTube Data API. We're going to click on that, and we're going to say Enable. And it's really important that you enable this, because otherwise it just it won't work, um, because you can create um, a, a Google API key, and it'll work on whatever services you've enabled. So you have to actually go in and enable it. Uh, and you can see there's a, a help, helpful warning message here that says, to use this API, you may need credentials. Click Create Credentials to get started. So I'm got, you know we can click this button. You can also go over to credentials on the left hand menu. So but since this helpful button's here, I'm going to click it. And uh, yeah, it's saying you know what API are you using? YouTube Data API. All right. Where you'll, where will you be calling it from? We're actually going to be calling it from a web server. So I'm going to select web server. And um, what data will be accessing? I'm only going to be accessing public data because you won't, you won't necessarily own the videos that you're going to be scanning uh, using you do it. And then click what, oh, OK. Yeah, click what credentials do I need and figure that out. And so here's my API key. Um, there is also an option to restrict the key to certain IP addresses, certain web addresses. Uh, I highly recommend doing that um, because if anyone gets a hold of your API key, they can use it wherever. Um, but I uh, highly recommend uh, restricting it. But in this case, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm going to delete this key right after the presentation. So uh, we're just going to use this for now. So there's our API key. So now we're going to go back to Heroku. And we're just going to paste this API key into here. And use Heroku config, we're going to keep that at true. And then now we're going to click Deploy. And if we look down here, we can see the status of everything it's doing. So if you look in this build app area, there's a bunch of code streaming by. And basically, this is these are all the things that you would have done manually or these are all the scripts that you would have manually initiated when you install this onto a real server, you know, or not a real server, but your own server uh, locally. So that's really that's the power of Heroku is you can script all of this ahead of time and, and allow the people that use your app to to do stuff like this very quickly. Um, and so when it, whenever you deploy an app, it takes a little while to run through all of the uh, uh, all of the scripts. And then it's right now it's building the actual uh, server that we're going to use and starting that up. And somebody did ask about what are the best practices for restricting the API key. Um, yeah, definitely you can do it by IP address. You can do it by URL. Um, and uh, especially since you can use the API, uh, the YouTube API from a front end, like from JavaScript. And when you're doing that, the user can find out that API key. So that's why it's really important to restrict the, the usage of it. OK, so now <clears throat> the app is deployed. So there's two buttons here, uh, Manage App and View. The first thing I'm going to do is actually click on View. And so that'll, that'll open up you do it in a new tab. 
And um, you can see that there's configuration problem. Please ensure that your instance of you do is configured correctly. Um, this is this is what we expect because we haven't we haven't finished configuring you do it. Um, and actually, I just wanted to do a little side note here. Whenever you're working with you do it and you encounter errors like this. If you contact me about them, please pay, paste the exact error that you found because I worded these very specifically uh, so that uh, they're all uniquely worded so that we can find them in the, the source code immediately and, and know where the error occurred. So, um, okay, so we've got our app here. So let's go back to the Heroku tab and now let's click on Manage App. So our app is actually deployed. You can see it's deployed here. But what we, we want to change some of the settings of it. So I'm going to go to the Settings tab here. And I want to reveal the config variables. So you can see the foo and the bar that I put in there earlier. Um, and also the OAuth2 URI, we need to replace this as well. So three values we need to change. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this OAuth2 URI uh, because it's using a generic URL here. It has your.herokuapp.com, but that's not actually what our app is. So I'm going to click the pencil to edit this. And I'm actually going to go over to the other tab where I have you do it opened. And you can see the URL for you do it is you do it-canvaslive.herokuapp.com. So I'm actually going to copy this, go back to Heroku. And then I'm going to leave the oauth2response.php at the end here. And I'm just going to paste over the, the beginning part of the URL. So now this is, our, this is our full value for the oauth2 URI. And while I'm in here, I'm going to copy this whole thing because I'm going to need it in the next step. And I'm going to click Save Changes. OK. So now comes the part where we go to the, uh, we go to Canvas and we create our developer key. So I've already got a tab open here uh, with the uh, the Canvas demo instance. <clears throat> and uh, to get to the uh, interface for creating uh, developer keys, you need to be an admin on um, on your sub account, like your your instance of Canvas. You need to be a full admin. So you should have this admin tab here. So I'm going to click on the admin tab. I'm going to ad administrate Canvas Live Demos, which is the instance I'm on. It'll be your school's name uh, in your case. And then on the left-hand menu, there's developer keys. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see I already have a developer key for the test that I ran earlier. So I'm just going to click Add Developer Key. And and depending on what your institution has done, you might have other developers key, developer keys here. So obviously, when you're in this menu, click with care. You don't want to delete uh, a developer key for an existing integration that you have. So we're going to click Add Developer Key. For, this, for the name of it, I'm going to name it You Do It Canvas Live. Uh, I guess I'll just put in my email. And then for the redirect URI, you want to skip this legacy one because this redirect URI's uh, plural is the new one. So I'm going to paste in that URI that I had copied before. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because uh, we have to put in the icon URL. And I admit this is something we didn't document very well in the README for you do it. So I'm going to tell you what that URL is supposed to be. And it's not that difficult. It's just weird. So in the PowerPoint presentation, I on the Canvas developer he slide, I show you what the, what the um, format of this URL is. So <clears throat> it's whatever your base is slash assets slash image slash you do it underscore icon dot PNG. So I'm actually going to copy the, uh, the end bit here. Go back to here, oh. paste that, and then I'm going to copy our base URL 
paste that in here. So um, actually, let's test out this, this URL just to make sure. So I'm going to open a new tab and go to that URL. And you can see that it pulled up the icon. So this is the icon that users see when they first uh, view the app, and it's asking them whether they would like to allow this app to make changes to their account. So that's it's very important that you have that image there because it kind of it puts the user at ease that it's a real app and not something weird. So uh, okay, we have this configured now. So we're going to click Save Key, and now that it's saved, we have some values here. So we have the ID um, and the key. So we're going to copy the ID. And it's very important when you're doing this to make sure that you're not copying any spaces before or after the ID. Because uh, I've had that happen before with, with customers. They, they would, um, or clients, I guess, we're not selling this, so not really customers. But they would put extra spaces at the beginning or end, and that would throw the whole thing off. But so since they're spaces, it's hard to see them. So just be very careful with that. So now that we've copied that OAuth2 ID, or the developer key ID, we're going to paste it into the OAuth2 ID field in Heroku. So we're going to edit that field and replace the value with this number. And I'm going to go to either end of the number, and I'm just going to move the cursor around and make sure that there's no spaces and hit Save Changes. And then I'm going to go back to the developer keys, and I'm going to copy this whole developer key here. I'm going to scroll over a little bit just to make sure I copied the whole thing. Copy that. Go back to Heroku. Click the Edit button on OAuth2 key. And then I'm going to paste that there. And again, I'm going to go back with the cursor and make sure that there were no spaces at the beginning and the end. And um, one thing I want to um, impress on you is that you need to, in this case, obviously, I'm showing this to you. Uh, it's good. This is going to be publicly visible on the internet. So I'm going to delete all of these keys and everything as soon as I'm done with this presentation. Um, in, for your actual installations, you want to keep all of this information secret. Um, the URLs and stuff, that's, that's public information. But any, any keys, uh, anything like that, you need to keep that secret. Um, OK, so we've made our changes. And those have already been, there's, there's no save button. It, it just automatically saves those as soon as we make the edits. Uh, so we're just going to leave this here for now. So let's let's go back to the presentation. And just make sure we didn't miss anything. Figure Heroku, we did that. All right. So now we need to install the UDoIt LTI. So to do this, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the XML config is working. If you've ever installed an LTI. There's always an XML that comes along with it that has all the configuration values, and you do it is no different. So in you do it's case, though, it's a little bit, a little bit weird looking because it's a dynamically generated XML file. Um, so we're going to go to. Let me go back to this tab here. So this is our base app, and if we go to slash you do it dot xml dot php if I can type today. Okay. And you can see that it's it has generated this uh, XML file for us. So we verified that this works. Uh, so now we can use this XML XML file to make the installation. So we're going to go back to our canvas instance. And you do it can either be installed at the account level the sub-account level, or the course level. Um, in this case, I'm going to go um, into my test course. I don't want to install this globally, because this is a shared uh, instance, and I don't want to mess up anybody else's demo. So I'm going to go into my test course here. You can actually see I already have you do it installed. I should have cleaned that up. But uh, in, your, in your course, you're going to go to Settings. And you're going to go to Apps. And then you're going to go to View App Configurations. And in my case, I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to delete the you do it that's already there. 
Okay, so you went to apps, view app configurations, and now we're going to go to the add app button. For configuration type, we're going to choose by URL. And we're going to put in the name as you do it. And uh, for the config URL, uh, I'm just going to skip forward to the config URL. We're going to go back to that tab where it had the XML file. We're going to copy that URL. And we're going to paste that into the, uh, the add app dialog. And now for the consumer key and shared secret, we're going to go back to Heroku. So these values are, they're just, val they're just junk values. They're randomly generated. They don't actually mean anything. They just need to be the same between your Heroku installation and when you install the LTI into Canvas. And these are basically how Canvas knows, or how you do it knows that the user is coming from an authorized um, instance of Canvas. So we're going to copy the consumer key and um, actually let's edit and then do the whole thing. And let's paste that. And again, I'm going to make sure that there's no spaces at the beginning or end because that will also throw it off in this case. And then we're going to go to the shared secret. We're going to copy that. We're going to go back to Canvas and we're going to paste that in the shared secret field. And again, I'm going to double check that there's no spaces. So this should be it, I'm just double checking. All right, and now we're gonna hit submit. And you'll get this checkbox that says the app was added if everything was successful. And now we get to test it out. So uh, normally you do it would not show up on the menu immediately, so you'll need to go to home uh, in your course or somewhere else in your course for the, the menu to refresh, okay? So now that we're there, we can we can see that you do it is over here in the side menu. We can click on that. Okay, so we can see that that icon that we put in there. We can see that this is the the you do it app that we configured, and it's saying that it's requesting access to your account. So this is something that every user will will um, encounter the first time they use you do it. <coughs> And depending on what happens to their account, sometimes things might expire, their, their approved applications might get cleared, and they might see this again later as well. Uh, but it's not a problem if they see it again. They just need to click Authorize. And the reason that shows up is because Udoit is, uh, is using that developer key that we created. Uh, and that allows Udoit to do things as the current user instead of using a super user API key or something like that. So um, now you can see that you do it is installed. And let's cross our fingers and run the scanner to make sure that I actually did it correctly. Because you know, live demos never mess up. Well, okay, well, while that's running, um, okay, scanning done. Yeah, so there we go, it, it ran. We've got the, uh, got all the issues here. And there we go, you do is, it is installed. Let me go back to my presentation here and pull this up. So um, we have an information page for you do it, and that is online.ucf.edu slash you do it. And we also have a Canvas community. Uh, well, we're part of the, the accessibility group in the Canvas community. So um, if you go to community.canvaslms.com slash groups slash accessibility, You'll see the UDOIT logo there, and, and there's a few different places where you can ask questions or um, uh, make feature requests, that kind of thing. And then there's also the GitHub project, uh, which if you're a developer or an administrator, um, that's, that's where you want to go. Uh, you can create issues there for us to evaluate bugs that you might have encountered or features you might want to see. Um, and uh, But you can also... Uh, you can email me or call me. Um, now, my phone number is also available on our on the CDL web, the Center for Distributed Learning website. Uh, so, if you don't, you know, get the um, the PowerPoint, you can also just download that. So, it's not 
um, it's not hard to find my contact information. Um, so now I'm going to be looking at <clears throat> uh, I'm going to be looking at the comments here in the chat and see if there's any questions. So please put those up there if you uh, um, if you get a chance. Uh, I see that we might have had some audio issues during the presentation, uh, but just keep in mind that this will this is recorded. So anything you missed, you can go back and uh, and view the recording. Uh, as well as looking at the PowerPoint presentation if you missed any of the URLs that I, uh, I put out there. So um, uh, Karen Tinsley Kim, from uh, also from UCF, uh, she uh, just pointed out that this took 30 minutes to set this up. Um, and obviously, I know what I'm doing, but it's not, uh, it's not that difficult. There's just a few different tabs you need to have open, a few different things you need to copy and paste. Um, and uh, it's, it's really not that bad. Um, another person asks, can you still provide a super user uh, to use it rather than having individuals approve it? And the answer is uh, yes, you can do that. Um, there, is, there are schools that have modified you do it to use a super user key. The only, thing you, the only problem with that is that you can't use Heroku when you're doing that. You need to have your own installation so that you can actually talk about, or you, so you can actually go into the code and change um, the the way it's the way it works. Um, so somebody asked, um, uh, are there other than the delay upon loading? Are there any drawbacks to using Heroku to host the app? Um, is, you know, is it, for example, if you're a big institution, would scanning be slowed if many users were utilizing the app at the same time? Um, that's a really good question. We haven't done any stress testing on our Heroku instances. Uh, I really, I only recommend the free one for um, uh, for testing. Uh, if you're going to actually go to production with it, you definitely want to pay for a Heroku instance. In which case, it won't be um, it won't be very like it might have a very slight delay when you load it up, but it, it it'll be much better. Um, somebody's asking about pricing in Heroku. Um, again, you know, you want to use a, a, a paid one if you're in your production environment, uh, or if you have very understanding faculty. But pricing, I'm not sure. You'll have to look at Heroku's site. Uh, they have uh, plenty of, of different tiers uh, for your apps. <clears throat> um, somebody said they just got their instance running. Um, I ran a scan and got some warnings. Can I suppress warnings? Um, if you're talking about the issues or, um, or the, sorry, the errors or suggestions within Canvas, you can't suppress uh, those um, right now. We don't have a way to hide those. If you're actually getting errors, um, like PHP errors, uh, you, yeah, I definitely need to email me about that because <laughs> I need to look at that and see what's going on. Um, so somebody's asking if I'm a Ruby on Rails developer because I'm using a Windows system. I actually use a Mac most of the time. It's just I'm using Windows because that's uh, what's in our meeting rooms. So, um, but this is all written in PHP. It's not. It's not in Ruby on Rails. Um, and uh, yeah. So if this is set up in a sub account and then later my full institution adopts you do it, will it cause problems? If so, how do I avoid? Um, so if you set it up in a sub account and then you later install it in the, the whole institution, you'll need to delete or you'll need to remove you do it from the sub account installation. Otherwise, you'll get two items in the menu, uh, two you do it's in the menu. We had that issue when we had pilot uh, faculty. We had about, I think, 20 faculty that were trying it out. And we were discovering that there were courses with two you do it's in there because we had installed it manually in each course. So um, you just need to go back and clean it up uh, after, uh, clean up your other installations when you go global with it. Um, how much testing can you do with the free Heroku account? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, the free Heroku account, you get, I think, 1,000 hours a month for free. There you go. Well, and that's, that's uh, Shay Silverman. He's uh, one of my coworkers. He's kind of sitting in here just in case. and. And uh, so, yeah, he'll, he might chime in here. Uh, tomorrow, I'm doing a Canvas Live on uh, how to build an LTI yourself, starting from scratch. 
So I'm also sitting in here just to see how YouTube Live runs and how it handles it. Yeah. Shame, um, shameless plug. Yeah, shameless plug. Uh, but also, uh, Heroku has the the next tier up. Really, is only seven dollars a month. Okay. That's not bad. So, were there any other questions? Okay. Well. Um, Oh yeah, and thanks. There's a link for Shay's session in the chat right now. Um, so yeah, so you have my contact information. If you have any issues with uh, you do it, um, we did actually discover a couple of bugs recently. So if you run into um, if you run into any bugs, please let me know. Um, uh, you have my email and my phone number. Uh, I prefer email, but if you if you just can't get a hold of, of me through email, please call me. Um, I, you know, I have a phone for a reason, so, <laughs> so please call me. Um, and also, go on the Canvas community if you have more general questions. There are plenty of people out there that, that have been using this. I, I don't have exact numbers of the number of schools using this, but it's, it's definitely over 30 schools. So there's plenty of people on the Canvas community that can answer questions. Uh, so yeah, if there's nothing else, um, I, I think I'm done. Thank you so much, Jacob. Thank you, everyone, for participating in this Canvas Live session. Hopefully, we'll see you in a future Canvas Live session, and the recording will be available on YouTube Live. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.